Today we're going to be looking at this coffee pot. Uh, the coffee pot is made of an alloy of tin and copper, generically called pewter, and for that reason I'm putting white gloves on, which uh, protects the alloy from oils and other contaminants in my hand that would later have to be polished off. This particular coffee pot has got several attributes that I think make it quite interesting. First of all, the metal, as I mentioned before, is a an alloy called pewter. Most pewter was made to be cast. The porringer that I've just brought into the picture uh, is such a, an example of cast pewter and you can see that the sides are fairly thick um, and it looks like it should have been made in a mold. This particular coffee pot however is made of a kind of pewter that was called Britannia in which they added two other metals to the alloy. The metals were antimony and bismuth which allowed them to use the pewter as metal sheets. One of the things that this particular pewter did was to put in this series of ribs at the top of the pot and along the base. Now these are decorative on the one hand but they also add strength to the object on the other hand. In addition, if we look down inside, we'll see that he added an extra sheet of metal around the top so that there was more strength to the metal up here where it was vulnerable to being hit. And of course, there is more metal around the base where again it's vulnerable when it's laid down on the table. The uh, spout is cast in two parts and, and soldered on. The sockets for the wooden handle are cast and soldered in place and so forth. The bottom of this is again another piece of molded pewter that has been soldered, soldered to the underside of the sides and the maker put his mark, there are lots of marks on the bottom, but the maker put his mark in a touch across the center of it. And if you were to look at that closely, it has the, the name I Trask for Israel Trask, who was a pewterer working from, oh, about the War of 1812 period uh, until mid-19th century in a little town north of Boston called Beverly. Now, the interesting thing about Israel Trask is that he was originally trained as a silversmith, not as a pewterer. He took some of his silversmith training and put it to use in this very unusual band of decoration around the body of the coffee pot. This is what we call bright work. This bright work decoration, which you see in close-up, is made by taking uh, a tool called a burin and actually engraving the surface, meaning that you take little furrows of metal out, little chips of metal out, and this was a standard way of decorating silver in the late 18th century and the early 19th century, about the time when our friend Israel Trask got his training. So he transferred that technology to the uh, sides of the pewter, and he and a few other people working in the Beverly Mass area are the only ones to have made this kind of decoration on pewter. Uh, I hope by going over some of the key components, features of this coffee pot, that it makes it a little bit more familiar to you and indeed a little bit more interesting.